Hello, everybody. Um, today we are talking about JavaFX and um, applied to the example of uh, the software I'm developing part time in my in my private private time, uh, the NLX tool. Um, and uh, on this example, we uh, will show how you can uh, implement JavaFX in your in your Eclipse application. Um, first of all, I will start with some uh, some introduction. What is uh, JavaFX about? Uh, and then I will go a bit more into the details of JavaFX, like the class hierarchy, and and in particular the uh, FXML schema. So so how to describe um, JavaFX uh, user interface with uh, the FXML schema. And uh, then um, after we talked about all the aspects of JavaFX, I will go into the practical part and I will demonstrate how it's then implemented into the NLX um, tool and um, yeah, walk, walk through the code and uh, then we can see how you could implement this or that feature. All right, um, then um, yeah, what is JavaFX? JavaFX is a graphical library or framework for Java um, that allows all kinds of graphics um, from 3D to 2D graphics, web interfaces, use and in general, building user interface and always much more um, features. Um, here you can see a little picture about what's what people are doing um, in JavaFX. So, so you have lots of graphical capabilities. Um, this picture is a good example of what's possible <clears throat> to do with, with this uh, framework. So. And also go to now it's uh, it's it's uh, 3D as well as 2D graphics and then they are in a kind of hybrid um, merge um, together. So you have uh, cameras, other stuff. I can map a perspective and shaders. You have can assign shader objects to 3D to 3D graphics objects, and um, yeah, kind of um, very. A comprehensive um, palette or tool set um, toolbox we have here with the JavaFX. Um, it started from 2009, and uh, in the higher versions of Java 11, uh, uh, JavaFX is um, sometimes uh, not included in these open um, JDK distributions, uh, which are um, out there. And so you have to be uh, careful which kind of open JDK you are you're downloading to have uh, the JavaFX um, included. All right. Okay, this is uh, an overview of uh, the NLX tool, uh, the user interface. And we are we mostly are going to talk about uh, this area here. Um, the orange part, which is our JavaFX um, view part that has implemented our um, JavaFX um, user UI elements. So, um, well, first we have here um, in our natural language um, platform uh, our natural language text. That is parsing that language text um, into a DOM tree. So for those who don't know NLX yet, um, it's it's a um, it's a kind of DSL um, domain specific language that is um, tailored to read natural language text and um, and kind of parse it into a um, DOM tree with this uh, DSL preprocessor. And then if we have um, kind of um, 
disassembled the, the whole text in, in uh, down to every word, then we can use uh, this tree to, to do all kinds of um, processing on those um, on those uh, word chunks. So, so we can then what is already as a working use case inside Validus is we create um, requirement models for the process modeling tool um, with all the cross links inside the document and um, group everything in um, in paragraphs and chapters and so so on. So it has a has a good uh, well elaborated detection of chapters and all those things, tables, everything is, is kind of um, in, a, in a way described semantically what, what it is in the text. But above that, we put the real semantics of the meaning of the text and it starts with a grammar detection. And this grammar detection is done with, um, with, um, with a, a database that was running in the background, it's Neo4j. The, you can see it here. So this is kind of the database that's um, in the background, but um, I will show it also later. So as I already mentioned, here we have our grammar trainer, and uh, the intention of training a grammar is that um, uh, our natural language sometimes is kind of ambiguous, and uh, it's better to to train uh, such a logic that the, the tool finds out the, the, the structure by itself eh, instead of um, putting those rules manually inside the computer because as we all know uh, developers all often have a rigid in, uh, imagination of uh, what they are programming and often the reality behaves differently and this trainer just um, is a form of ma machine learning um, approach that tries to learn uh, the structure of a sentence by interact interacting with this trainer. And by that also prove a hypothesis that uh, you can also do machine learning on models, which finally will, as a, this, this is just a um, hypothesis, will one day outperform uh, neural networks. But no. right. All right, induced. This is the Java X view. And um, here a little bit of uh, a view of the that um, database that is running in the background. It's a graphical database that creates kind of um, an, um, entity relationship models. Um, of um, items in the text and um, creates a kind of um, relationship. This um, you can see it as an uh, ontology, but I wouldn't describe it as ontology on this level, but more a kind of grammar rule you can train. Uh, and if this um, is kind of uh, fulfilled or, or, or final, uh, then you can then you can um, make an ontology or, or use it. Or you can run an onto or create an ontology on top of that structure. So if you have the structure um, based on the, the knowledge in the database, you then can use the structure to create ontologies on top of that. So, but at the moment we are just in this level of creating the grammar um, detection, the grammar tree that uh, is resolving the, the sentence and the whole documents in such three structures. Okay. So now that's just an introduction to know what is this, uh, about this tool and how we are implementing Java FX, uh, FX in it. So I will go more into the details of the Java FX itself. First of all, we have a, a class family, a class hierarchy, that is uh, um, extending from the basic class node, which has the fundamental um, uh, methods and, and attributes in it, 
and extends from then on, on to to more specific uh, uh, classes. For us, uh, more, mostly the pain class and its subclasses will be interesting for us because we will use it in this um, JavaXU to lay out all the UE parts and UI parts and such. So, so that's I magnified it for you that you can see it better because the tree is very huge. That's uh, why I, um, this magnifying is just giving you a, a more closer look on what is mostly interesting for us in this um, presentation. All right. And on top of that, uh, or or more convenient way to build user interface with JavaFX is um, FXML. It's an XML scheme that um, describes, um, like in an XML file, describes the um, setup of such an, um, a JavaFX scene. And um, you can uh, create such um, JavaFX scenes uh, in in the uh, scene builder, a scene builder is uh, what you see is what you get editor. You can uh, yeah, create such uh, scenes or um, as I would say assets. Um, and it also supports uh, the supports the subset of CSS. So you can also give them a kind of uh, style sheet um, attributes um, that um, also it gives you a your your user interface a bit of a responsive behavior. All right, this is the FXML file uh, as it looks like. It's um, uh, those who know uh, XML files, which is actually all of you. Then it looks quite familiar for for everybody. That um, here you can see the clear XML structure. In the top you have this. Um, this import, this import header where, where you import all the, the um, different different types of graphics uh, objects you or classes you would require to describe this uh, scene. Um, also shaders, for instance, here there is no shader included, but you can also have shaders and um, much more graphical objects that are uh, in the um, um, import part and the header part of the of this file um, implemented, and then uh, there comes this hierarchical hierarchical part, which is um, further down, where it describes the scene hierarchy. So, um, for instance, if I open up the scene builder, oh, they have it in the background. Here you can see the scene builder, and um, this um, here you have uh, the scene is, is like um, starting right here. We have this um, grid pane as um, the the most uh, root part uh, in this in the scene, and then we have uh, in one grid we have a toolbar. This is one day um, maybe going to be a toolbar, but the, the final goal would be to control this, um, this, this, this view without a toolbar. So this is just, uh, um, if I cannot um, find some methods uh, to do it without a toolbar, I have to introduce a toolbar, but it's just for testing now. I have some, and then here there comes the scroll pane, which is holding all the panels of the this, this, this panels you have seen in the, in the audio picture, and it will lay out inside that. So, so first we have um, an entry pane. Entry pane allows every every objects inside uh, that pane to be layouted um, with a layout coordinate, like with layout X and layout Y. But also for 3D objects, we have um, a kind of um, 3D transformation matrix that um, is roughly described here. Usually also with the trans transformation matrix, you would also have a shear parameters, but it's not available here in this in this version. But uh, the basic the basic uh, coordinates uh, you would write also is able to, to do a kind of uh, 3D um, 
translation on that. I mean, and and then if you manipulate such such scaling parameters, all those um, um, child objects will will um, adjust um, accordingly. So they say they will be attached or or yeah. Um, directly with the parent objects and will scale and trans translate as the parent object does. So, and then inside this angel pane, we can lay out um, objects with coordinates. And um, so we have some kind of, for these uh, spheres and such, uh, we, I, I played around with uh, some lights and cameras, but it's not so important for us. For us is uh, this vertical box, which just lays inside here, and this lay virtual this vir vertical box has on top there's this pane with some kind of breadcrumbs, I guess. What let me say? So stack panes. This is. So this is a kind of uh, breadcrumb that is like laying on top, just also some more experimental stuff. But the more important uh, thing is for us is um, below here. So here we have um, a classical pane, which with this class does everything what lays inside, is does, uh, it does um, automatic layout. Um, unlike the angel pane, where you can choose a layout coordinate, here in the normal uh, pane, the, the the objects are placed uh, automatically uh, by JavaFX with a horizontal horizontal box. But actually, I don't know why this should be. No, I I know why. This one is the link pane. Yeah, okay. Well, in this in this one you can. Sorry, I was I was um, I was telling you something wrong. Also in the pane you can lay out objects inside that uh, that are um, that you can place with coordinates, but only in the horizontal box or grid boxes. And you have also many other types. Sorry, panes. Where are they? Containers here. Like here, grid pane, uh, horizontal box, or or um, split pane, all kinds of panes where you where the um, Java Java X is doing automatic layout, but the normal pane also allows to place objects with coordinates inside. So and this is used later for those uh, links uh, you will see, and this is for the panels that are layouted in a horizontal order. All right, back to the presentation. So now we're going more into the implement implementation phase. You now just uh, have seen the FXML file, how it is described. We also, well, CSS, I don't need to show you. You all know what how a CSS file looks like. Maybe later we can have a little uh, short look at it. And to, if you have interactive objects uh, inside or want to address a certain object inside your uh, FMXML graphics, you have this controller class that is can be generated from Eclipse out of uh, a FXML file. And then finally, to speed things up, because there is a kind of uh, disadvantage, uh, I come later on, on to it, um, with JavaFX, the JavaFX um, unfortunately has uh, um, uh, a little bit of uh, kind of miss, the architecture is, um, yeah, not so made for for um, small assets thinking like you know from maybe from Unity if you have uh, seen uh, tried Unity also already out that you can describe certain objects in uh, with a particular FXML file, uh, but JavaFX is more intended to create entire. Uh, user interface with one FXML file, but not split them up in several files. And that, that's why if you instance small objects 
uh, it always tries to load all the classes um, again and again at every time you want to instance a, a particular object. We come later to that uh, a bit when it comes to the panels and all the other uh, objects. In this class loader, um, you can re replace. Uh, here you can see in the set class loader, um, in the loader object, uh, you can you can put your own class loading uh, class inside that will speed up your 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 process because uh, this class loader caches the classes from JavaFX and doesn't um, doesn't do it um, like the standard class loader from JavaFX. So the standard class loader from JavaFX is always loaded the classes from from disk and from the always they are packed in zip files and such things. And this rate makes the whole framework a bit slow. But with such a caching class loader, you cache the classes and it will speed up the whole loading and instancing of objects very much. All right. OK, now we uh, we already have a little bit of uh, introduction from this Java C builder, where we have seen a bit the structure of this um, canvas file, this, this um, seed file here. You can um, see the toolbox again and these kind of breadcrumbs uh, I already showed you in the scene builder. And now in this horizontal pane, you see this green, these green panels. They are laid out horizontally. And then you will see this, this, this kind of um, links or black, black um, lines that, that connect um, these panels in a kind of hierarchical tree-like order and this is the the it's a it's this layer on top because we have a stack pane as you can remember from the JavaFX builder so here we have this pane on top of the horizontal box and there you, we can we can lay out those kind of uh, path objects um, to link from from one panel to the next and all these um, all these objects are described with one uh, with an extra uh, FXML file. So I when I when we go to Eclipse, we will uh, see we will see all these JavaFX files, uh, these FXML files, um, how they are used and how the objects are getting instanced inside this um, scene. So. Uh, that was last but not least uh, to finish this introduction to JavaFX. Um, a summarizing of um, pros and cons. So the pros are it's a uh, simple and comfortable configuration. It and allows you to create very interactive uh, user interfaces. You get an editor where you can where you can edit it very conveniently your user interface and also allow um, style sheet support and uh, many, many, many things else. As I already announced, uh, it's also in uh, this particular use, uh, if you want to instance several JavaFX objects inside a scene, then it can become slow because it always tries to load the classes again and again, um, and it can all only be sorted the workaround if you create your own caching class loader. Uh, well, and also the disadvantage is also a bit um, that uh, JavaFX is a bit stepmotherly in implemented in, uh, in the Java environment, and therefore you need some extra configuration also in Eclipse. You need extra plugins uh, that support this uh, JavaFX capability inside Eclipse. That makes it a bit complicated to implement at the beginning, but then it's quite convenient uh, if you have set up everything. Okay, now we're going into the demonstration. Therefore, I switch to Eclipse. And we can see here, this is our, um, um, our FX View plugin, a plugin. Um, bundle 
And um, here I have lots of uh, classes inside that uh, do certain, that describe certain certain objects. But first we go into the FXML files. You see here a lot of XML files. Um, and we, for, but this is that describes this semantic FX view describes the view. This is what we have already opened with the grid pane. And uh, here we can see the, the layout. But then every panel has its own, own FXML file. So we have, for instance, I can open it in here so you see it better what it looks like. Um, for instance, if we do the panel object, it looks like that. So we have this rounded co um, corner shape with a plus icon and a label on top. And uh, it also has some kind of um, stack pants inside. So here, this is uh, below, this is this paint, this, this, this rounded, rounded shape. And then we have on top, we have a label and a vertical box, which will hold our um, another FXML object. This is our type container or, or types or type controls, which defines uh, what, what type is this, uh, this, this word um, of, so if it's a noun or um, a adjective or a verb or something like that, and we can we can uh, then instantiate such such a uh, such type type um, controls. So when I open such a type control, this is like that. So you see this uh, this is just uh, has two combo boxes and a um, kind of button where to switch between different types and. As you also saw, is a this link path which describes the path with some kind of um, certain commands to how to draw this path. Well, and here you can see how it finally looks like. So um, when we pass this first sentence, um, here you have uh, a noun, a name. And then it's related to a, a bracket, and this bracket has is, is kind of container object that that holds another sentence inside. So you can so be the kind of uh, uh, accordion um, pan, accordion panel. You can you can open and close this, and you see all the lines are adapting accordingly, and they're also kind of responsive. If I go move over these objects here, you see that the that they turn, they change their color. So now uh, when I hover over it, it turns, in, turns green or the plus button is turns blue and the lines are turning blue as well and, and so on. And I see if I have a certain type that is, uh, for instance, this, uh, the word is, the, it's, it belongs, it is a verb and it also as a subtype it's an auxiliary verb, but in this context, it's not an auxiliary verb, so I have to fix this. But just you, you know that you can by that describe subtypes, and it will also uh, show this 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 UI control if it's a subtype or not. And then later in some some in some in some context, a word is is either a adjective or a verb, and then you can choose. Uh, in which cut or you can train this grammar trainer if it's in this context a verb or it's a, another word and will does this work in progress it will detect if this this word is, is in this context a, an, a verb or it is an uh, adjective or something like that or in which ten, tense it is and such things this is uh, still work in progress but but here you can see how it how it works a bit um, you can add other other types. This is not yet creating an additional word type, but the UI is already working. I can add more like this, and then you see how the uh, this panel is adapting. And also could switch now over to to that type. 
So also if I hover over this, you see that the circles turn blue. It's also good um, visual feedback to that you know that you that this object, this UI element is reacting on your um, input. Um, in this in this example, the mouse, and uh, this gives you a but much more convenient uh, inter uh, user user interaction experience or user experience. If you if the the object is responsive and reacts on your mouse hovering and such things, and then finally if you click on it, you will see ah, oh, this already works a bit. Uh, okay, but usually um, it should not yet. But um, if I say um, this is not a noun, then the hierarchy will change. And uh, no longer this this connection will work out. So you see that the, the connection have been broken, but uh, now it's um, need to be fixed a um, bit. So as you see, this is still work in progress. All uh, right. So this is a bit. Uh, you can see the look and feel of the user interface, like it like it's adapting, and. First of all, at the moment, this is not storing any status. So if I just click on a sentence again, then it will it will rebuild everything from scratch. So here you see new configuration. This is not entirely trained, so it doesn't find the entire structures, but only uh, lower structures. Um, this is still. Um, Accounted to some some features I would would uh, require to implement that it need it it knows how it can detect certain word words in a different word type. Uh, when when this is solved, then I can build the structure or um, continue with building the structure. Um, maybe in this part, one thing that is maybe. Interesting. We could now show how you how it can train new structures. So here I reserve for you maybe an example that we have here. This kind of structure also take part, and then we can say then the more more higher structure will can now take a preposition. And then we will, when we drag this panel over here, also to now drag drag feature. Interesting thing, if I drag or here we have a kind of uh, visual object that a line that is indicating where I want to connect. This is also a good um, user experience or help to see that the user interface is reacting on my inputs, and you. So I can see what I do want to connect with something else. So I want to connect this structure. So to now, in, at this point, when I pick one of these objects in the structure, and uh, it always takes at the moment the whole structure. So it doesn't use only this panel, this word, but it already knows I'm belonging together, and then it always looks on the entire structure. So when I drag this on the next object, then I get a kind of uh, mouse uh, feedback that it now allows me to drop this uh, this line or this connection on this object. But if I go further, it says no, you cannot uh, skip one object. You can only assign it to the next. Uh, structure. So, so another example would be the one before. Here we have two uh, adjacent structures nearby each other, only separated by a comma, and a comma is all, all is not is accounted as a kind of um, a different uh, connection, and I could. Draw this over here because they are laying nearby near, and uh, it will detect that the, com the, the connection between these two structures. But I do not want to touch this order at the moment. 
And for you, I would like to connect this structure with that. And then, ta-da, a new structure is created. Now we have a higher hierarchy created by where we use this structure and we say after this structure, it is allowed that a preposition can, can follow. And therefore, you see this new connection. And if I move to another sentence like that, uh, this the structure is um, has has been um, it, it it has has been stored and and uh, now is um, it stays okay. I think um, this uh, for the beginning. This is. Um, I would say most of the um, aspects uh, described of the look and feel of the user interface, and uh, we go more deeper into the code. First of all, we have a um, semantic FX view part. Uh, to now, uh, if you want to instance a, um, a view part in Eclipse for JavaFX, you, or you have to extend the FX view part which is uh, from from the Java um, the F Org Eclipse FX UI workbench. It belongs to the if this this Java Java FX bundle from Eclipse, and when you use this class, uh, or you can instance from this class and, uh, and extend um, your own view part. Therefore, you have your main canvas that is holding all the objects inside. And it is uh, in the create great FX scene. So first of all, as we already know from our slides, we need this FXML loader. It takes the FX, this, this resource. This is a um, and then file name inside the class, and I'm just addressing it by that. And I load it with the with the loader class. Or I just implement or in like not implement preset it with uh, with the constructor of this FXML loader class. But then I set the class loader as um, Mori mentioned to speed up things, and then. I load the whole scene in a pane ob uh, object. So and uh, also I I load the controller. So the con or I, I get the controller and assign it to this this class. And therefore from this controller um, I can address all the objects that are um, at, that are can be addressed inside. I'm we introduce a bit more of the details here. So, and when we
and it uh, is yeah it kind of evaluates the links and then finally inside uh, this update uh, method is always called if something is changed uh, in the layout um, so also when the nodes are are getting reshaped like here when you go to the node panel we have a listener it's um, not in the uh, node panel itself but in the factory and the change listener here we assign it to the node panel set listeners here so it is in the in the factory where we set the listener and if if uh, anything changed uh, the bounds so change listener of the bounds of this object then it will call the update of the links and it uh, redraws the links so Okay, here we have, and this is then called, uh, that's the link calculation that it traces um, from the panel object. So here we have this panel chain. As we, will, as we store all the objects we instanced from the sentence, and it runs through the nodes and then looks inside uh, the, this node if it has a link. Uh, node, get link if it has a link. Then it will trace down the hierarchy of this, of this link hierarchy and thus uh, rec recursive uh, calculation of the links and then finally draws the links by calculating the coordinates because of uh, if it's a uh, uh, so I need to know which is the next uh, lowest hierarchy the next uh, route from from that starting point and to find the mid midpoint of such a, a link uh, the up higher hierarchy link that I've have to calculate the midpoint of such a link to to attach it uh, to the um, to the lower or the yeah to the next link in the in the higher structure higher hierarchy and it goes through that um, recursively and uh, finally draws all the links then. Um, Okay, so now we can go to our controller classes. Would be so we have our um, first of all our from our overall scene we have um, this this um, managing um, view controller, and here we have um, so so this is kind of a, a bit like of um kind of java if uh, like you know it from from uh from the from the chais uh guys or google, google chais um framework this this uh, dependency injection um java x for us assigns all the the objects that is our instance inside our c our fxml files with um with those um, uh, with those um, object variables we have here, so so we we define them in our JavaFX uh, FXML file, where we uh, this is our did our controller how it is located here. So we we say this is where is the local lo controller, and here we see all the objects we have. Um, named and if we go to some kind of object in our hierarchy uh, hierarchy here like here we have our horizontal box and this uh, we call panel, panel stack so this is our name panel stack and then finally you will find this in our in our controller uh, class uh, here with the same name, panel stack, and then JavaFX knows that uh, I have to assign this variable with um, with um, uh, JavaFX object, um, this this horizontal box, um, and link them together. So so then I always know um, if my JavaFX um, asset is created, 
that when I wanted to uh, address panel stack, I always address in this object I defined in my scene uh, description, in my FXML file. And um, by that I can I can get um, setters and and getters for for my for my variables and um, and also some some kind of um, here we have some kind of drag drag functions like uh, here um, if if something is dragged over the scene then it will um, react in a certain way that it will draw this kind of line visual as I call it this line visual this line we we have seen this will be updated all the time and the mouse is moving and will um, by those uh, our coordinates we we see from the here this event we can calculate the, the, the line then so this is always an interactive function where where uh, will where the line will be drawn as soon as um, we will drag the mouse over to the scene but the same thing um, is required in our node um, controller. So the node controller is a bit has a more complex hierarchy. So because it shares many functions with other uh, objects, I created some kind of class hierarchy. So it's panel object extend extended controller um, is extending. Um, yeah, this is a bit more complex or hier hierarchy. So we have an uh, abstract controller which um, holds all the common functions and then goes up to abstract object controller. And I think I go here. So we have we have different. So final extension extend. Extended controller is a newer object of panel object controller, which is more deprecated. So this actually is no longer valid. And the container controller is for containers. And uh, we have also the type uh, element, which uh, where we can instance our types. It's also inherits from the abstract object controller. They all share the same functionality with uh, the abstract object controller. Um, all right, and also have some drag features and such things inside. So I have to look where I think it's on the level of abstract controller where we have all these drag features, and these are all common for uh, for every class. So we we I defined it in this um, more abstract controller that it um, shares all the functions inside here. Here we defined in this in this kind of lambda lambda function we define um, if the objects can accept um, drags or not where we see this uh, forbidden sign the mouse turned into this uh, rounded shape with the forbidden sign uh, here in this is the default mode so we do not accept drags uh, drops um, that's why we say none and um, but when I go to small panel object controller, then uh, we accept any any type of tracks on it. And it's also interactive, so so we we always look if I if I'm allowed to accept something if I'm the next object. Uh, but I think it will be a bit complicated to show you, and would maybe go a bit too much into details, but. Uh, last but not least, I, I want to show you the drag feature a bit. So here we have this drag panel start. We create, we receive a mouse event, create our, get our coordinates here, and um, then we are, uh, we ha we have a more attached, detached drag controller that is that is shared or among many scenes and uh, it has the connections to to the start object and the the, the, the source of uh, source and the destination object and so we can 
and then hand over the information over this track controller to the source object. But finally, yeah, we, we this in this part we we not we we sourcing the source of the, the drag, and then finally we have here the drop 